Welcome back to the dead ball area. In this video we're going to continue to look at the England versus New Zealand semi-final, this time focusing on England's defence. If you like this video then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and will keep you up to date with future videos. Like many teams now, England are defending with Youngs at two and Underhill in the half-back position. Underhill will defend the area at the back of the line out, meeting any peel and then push out tracking the ball until he's connected with Ford closing the seam. Young's role here is to first defend the short side, then defend any move through the middle before bouncing back to the near edge to defend. And this allows Watson to sit back as a second 15 and England to operate a 13-2 defensive system. Now let's focus on Underhill Jordan Sinclair. Coaches talk about being connected in defence, and generally that's seen as people being in one flat line and spaced out well, knowing what each other are doing. But here we see how it can mean much more than that. For me, it means knowing how everyone is working within the system. And if we track these three players, we can see that Underhill will pressure the ball, and George, knowing this, now tracks behind him, policing the space he's left. Sinclair will then fold underneath to cut off any line break, and it gives him the angle for a counter ruck should a breakdown occur and an opportunity arise. And as this plays out, we can see how Underhill is connected with Ford and the seam is completely closed. And then the key to good defence is control. Controlling your line speed and spacing, but also controlling what the opposition do with that ball. England have closed off the inside space, leaving Goodyear with two options. Play wide or take it into contact. And note how Sinclair and George are still folding under, but are still on the inside of the ball. Everything is just pushing New Zealand towards that far touchline. Goodhue recognises this and does exactly the right thing, taking contact to reset the defence and create a new offside line. England have controlled the ball and the attack here, and it's really a good play. And George and Underhill don't look for the ball at all, fold round, set that far side defence. Again, we see how, along with Tulangi, they set well off the rear of the ruck to avoid offside and get a jump on Smith's pass. Tulangi pushes up the pressure, and George and Underhill work in tandem to again close off that transition zone. Again, we can see that Underhill, Sinclair, and George are all still connected and have now linked with Tulangi and May. And again, England have largely controlled what's happened here methodically isolating that ball. They're happy to lose ground, knowing the end goal is to either take the ball into touch or get a ball carrier isolated and hopefully attack the ball. Notice how May just backs off, staying square until the inside man takes the hit. And this means May stays alive and Reese never gets a chance to beat him. It's a complete Hail Mary from Reese. We can see how well England have done to get a single line chasing up to pressure the ball. Again, Curry has pushed ahead, allowing England to drive the ball back into the covered defence. Note Tojo's power here, it allows him to get back into play quickly and disrupt the New Zealand ball, slowing it down long enough for England to get a well-set line. And again, we see the line set two, three paces behind the offside line. And that generates line speed and means Barrett's only worthwhile option is to kick into space. Now watch as May goes up, Reese makes a token gesture of getting in the air. He's never in a position to catch the ball, it's just about disruption. Trying to distract May and get in Daly's way on the landing. His sole goal here is to disrupt the catch as much as he can. We see Sinclair is organising George on his left to take the inside ball and they break the line. And it's nice continuity from England to offload to Youngs and then Ford, but I think perhaps a better option than to kick down the middle would have been to keep the ball in hand or kick long into the far left corner. It's a great chase from England. Notice how they get ahead of or in between the New Zealand blockers, reducing the chance for one of them to create a gap for that line break. And it's a lovely bit of awareness by Oranga, keeping the ball alive, launching the counter-attack. The All Blacks are straight into their support mode, left and right options where possible, and players support the ball from depth, which is why Goodhue is able to collect the ball and keep the move going when it goes to ground. As it all finally comes to an end, look at how England have three tacklers around Barrett taking him into touch. It's incredible work rate to turn and work back and snuff out that attack. And throughout this sequence, we see England control everything that's in their power to control. It's a wonderful moment of awareness for Moonga to create a line break. And from complete control, England are now stuck scrambling but they managed to close it down. In this next clip, we see New Zealand poach a line out and England quickly close the space down. New Zealand have the numbers on the outside, so Tuolangi shoots out to disrupt the attack. What this allows Tuolangi to do is force New Zealand into making a decision, and they move the ball on, and it goes from being a possible two versus one against May to three versus two, with Farrell covering inside and Tuolangi chasing down Barrett. And watch how it removes Barrett's ability to draw May and pass, or to go if May commits to the dummy. It's excellent defence from England who are happy to surrender territory rather than the line break. It's good line speed and spacing from England, but notice how even though they've been dragged all the way to the 5 metre line, they're still able to fill nearly all of that 15 to 15 area, with Ford being a little on his own on this near side, but also supported by Watson. 
and align speed forces New Zealand to cut back, meaning England don't need to fold around in numbers. Again, the defence is set a few steps behind the offside line, creating a good line speed again, with Ford pressuring Taylor. New Zealand rewind, but watch where Curry comes from, again behind the offside line, moments before the ball leaves Smith. Pressuring Surveyor enough that the ball can't be offloaded, and even though Surveyor breaks the tackle, Curry has support behind him to finish the tackle off. Again, it's good line speed for forcing Moonga back inside, and watch how Laws manages to complete the tackle, but stays on his feet, stopping the All Blacks from coming in and clearing Underhill out, who gets the steal. It's incredibly good defence from England, controlling the ball the majority of the time and forcing New Zealand into trying things from deep and under extreme pressure. It's testament to how good New Zealand are, they were able to generate line break opportunities from the very small chances they got. Now that's it for this video, but a couple more bits of England's defence play that I want to look at in the third and final video of this set. Thanks for watching, and if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter, both at the Dead Ball area. Thank you for all your support, and I'll see you soon.